Zhou Fun is located in Reifang District, New Taipei City. It became prosperous in its beginning because of the abundance of gold and was the center of gold mining in Taiwan. At its largest, the population being 40 to 50,000 people. As the night fell, the village of Zhou Fun, viewed from the sea, was a splendid myriad of twinkling lights, called Little Shanghai or Little Hong Kong by people at that time. The gold miners thought the gold was the property of Tudi Gong, the earth god. So, at the entrance of each mine pit, a shrine to Tudi Gong was set up. Every household worshipped Tudi Gong, praying that he would bless them with the discovery of gold ore. As many made a fortune from the gold mine, Tudi Gong and Zhou Fun received special treatment. The Fushan Tudi Temple, with its three open room pattern, elevated it to the level of Wangya Temple built to honor a higher god, and so back then it was the most sumptuous shrine to Tudi Gong. So 就成為這個地方的代名詞 during the Qing Dynasty, China lost the Sino-Japanese War in 1895. In the Treaty of Shimonoseki, the Qing Dynasty was forced to cede Taiwan and the Penghu Islands to Japan, including the mining rights to Zhou Fun. The Japanese divided the mine into two parts with a north-south line across the peak of Jilong Hill as the demarcation line. Zhou Fun in the west was marked off as part of the Fujita Company, and Jingua Shi, the golden town in the east, was obtained by the Tanaka Group. Japan was then world famous for the advancement of its gold mining. The Fujita Group introduced many new types of equipment for gold mining and modernized gold mining in Zhou Fun. As easy access to the mineral deposits gradually came to an end, the Japanese plan to close down the management of the mines in 1914, the Fujita Group sold the management rights of all the mines in Reifang for a price of 30,000 Japanese yen to Yen Yun Nian, who served in the Fujita Group for 15 years and was responsible for dispatching goods, materials, and workers for the mining. Since then, the Taiyang Mining Industry Corporation, established by Yen Yun Nian, has monopolized all the mining rights to the Golden Zhou Fund. Some say the largest Tudi Gong in Zhou Fun was Taiyang Company itself because all the land in Zhou Fun belonged to Taiyang. We can also say that Zhou Fun's fame was created by the Taiyang Company. Yan Yun Yan understood well that people working for Taiyang were opportunists and risk takers. Therefore, he divided the region, and the small areas were leased to other contractors and workers to gain profit from the rental. This way of assigning areas to other subcontracting parties was called the three-level contract system. In this open subcontracting system, the great mass fervor of gold mining surged to its peak and started a new page in Zhou Fun's glory and splendor. In the heydays of Zhou Fun, since it was easy to mine the gold, many people were big spenders. According to the local elders, at that time the second-class products were sold in Taipei, while the best products would be transported to Zhou Fun. Su Qi Lu was the earliest traffic artery in Zhou Fun and was built following the slopes of the landscape. The intersection of Shu Qi Road and Qi Bian Road was called Xi Tai Ko, which was the most animated place in Zhou Fun. The first movie house in northern Taiwan, Shengpin Theater, was located there. The methods used to extract gold were quite different from those used for coal. The rock in coal pits was softer and a landslide could happen more easily. 
The rock formation of a gold mine was harder, so fewer accidents happened. The tunnels of a gold mine were usually ventilated and drained. The temperature inside the pit was maintained at around 15 degrees. At the time, there were many rumors about the taboos of mining. <laughs> The ore transported from the pit was sent to the processing plant. After the ore was pounded into powder, it would be ground and processed further and, at length, auriferous gravel was obtained. There are many ways to refine gold. At that time, an amalgamation process was mainly used in the gold mine in Jofun to refine gold. The recycled auriferous gravel was often mixed with other minerals. As mercury possessed the quality to attach itself to gold, alchemists added mercury to auriferous gravel and stirred it to refine it into solid amalgam alloys. <laughs> In the small mountainous area of Jofun, black houses were so overcrowded that they seemed to get piled up alongside warehouses on the slopes to form a city community varying in a disgraceful disorder. Stone houses were the most common buildings in Jofun. The forefathers used local materials to build their homes. They built stone houses by laying stones, while the wealthy families used upright and four-square stones, ordinary people used miscellaneous irregular stones. <laughs> Jofun Elementary School was established in 1910. It was the only primary school in Jofun. It was called public school during the Japanese colonial era and was located at the top of Suchi Road. The playing field was a man-made field built out of the largest retaining wall in the Jofun district. The big old banyan tree was a landmark of Jofun. It was also the most scenic spot for overlooking the entire Jofun area. There were only small-scale clinics in the district of Jofun, not a large hospital. After Taiwan's restoration, Taiyong Company noticed the scarcity of medical treatment equipment in the gold mining area and set up a gold mine clinic. The company set up 12 sick beds and employed Dr. Peng Ching Ho to practice medicine here. At that time, many mine workers suffered from black lung disease due to the inhalation of too much dust, so Dr. Peng made a thorough study in the treatment of silicosis and saved numerous mine workers suffering from it. 
In Joe Fun, you had to either climb up the slopes or go downstairs. Many mine workers with late stage silicosis could not do it, so a unique system of house calls was developed in Joe Fun. The doctors carried their medicine cabinets to the households of the patients to administer treatments. From the 1950s to the 1960s, the government implemented controls on gold to stabilize the price. So the price of gold could not catch up with the price index, and Taiyang companies sustained great losses. Taiyang, in the 50s, the government wanted to end it. Because at that time, the high-ranking officials, the managers, the board, all of them suggested that the government should end it. But I think the thing I like about Taiyang is that it is very thoughtful. It is very thoughtful. 啊，台阳的董事长啊，认为说这些九份，呃，这个还有一万多人啊，但不是只有矿工了，包括他的家属、他的后代啊，有一万多人要靠太阳吃饭。他如果一下子就关门的话，那这些人就饿肚子了，怎么办啊？所以于心不忍，所以他采取逐步营收的方式。那阵往困的，困讲啊，你也有什么好的一路吼，一路爱去专业，吼，你也有什么一路是爱去换刀。哦，或者要将公司的这阮教阮的职员吼，有用遣散的，遣散当然有遣散金给人，哦，或者是讲来调去这煤矿去工作。我印象是民国六十八年，就一九七九年的时候，来九份，啊，一开始就觉得很好奇，为什么这么多房子，为什么人这么少，人跑去哪里的？那所以已经生意萧条到已经。完全没有所谓的商机可言。那这些店家没有结束的是为了他自己也不想搬出去。那跟老邻居有一个互动啊，那个生意到最后已经不是生意了。After the 90s, the unique old architecture, slopes, and atmosphere attracted many movie and advertisement producers to Joe Fun for the scenery and great shots. The word spread through the mass media and the rise of tourism in Taiwan. In this small town, Zhou Fun, which had degenerated for decades, started to attract people's attention again, and the town was revived. With a great deal of resources invested in tourism, business development boomed, and the look of the whole community changed at a very rapid pace. That 23 years ago. 我也常常到九份来画画，以前都是在那边嘛，后来慢慢画到这边来，我发现这边这个树也很好，然后每次这样来来去去，我觉得不方便，我就问旁边那个老太太，我说这边有没有房子要卖？说有啊，那一家就是要卖，就是这一家，然后慢慢慢的很多人一个抱一个，最多的时候九份的画家有五十七位。让九份能够继续永久不衰的方式，哈，就是文化不断的扎根，甚至于工艺啊，那工艺师能够在这边啊赚到他们的这个温饱啊，能够在这边落地生根，那这样子九份就名副其实的变成一个啊所谓的艺术村的一个最好的文化观光旅游地。Some changes still need to be made in Joe Fun if it is to be developed. Change does not mean destruction. The development of the mountainous town is just part of its story. Joe Fun, in this ongoing process, has become an energetic mountain town. There is a kind of spontaneous vitality among the people themselves. In Joe Fun, the remains of the mine pit culture have become an authentic and sincere presence painted by the artist. If the stream of people is just an appearance, then the fulfillment of profound arts and culture is the soul of Joe Fun. We expect Joe Fun can recreate its inner elegance, a kind of beauty with age and a never-ending splendor.